this article, I want to, it's extremely short. I can read it in probably 30 seconds or a minute. I wanted to read through here and see this, this position that this author has. This is written by a man named Bob Daly. Um, uh, and again, the title's Earthworms, Free Fertilizer for Lawns. Um, it, uh, there's a quote here he has at the beginning. It may be doubted that there are many other animals which have played so important a part in the history of the world as have these lowly organized creatures. I don't know who made that quote. I guess that's Charles Dar Darwin. He has a Charles Darwin quote here. Um, so the article starts, the best method to judge the health of the soil beneath a lawn is to discover how many earthworms are present. So right from the beginning, he's going to assume that the number of earthworms in the lawn is directly related to the health of the soil, which again, I'm not going to argue that. I'm just going to point out his, his position. Earthworms can restore the hard pan of a compacted dirt. So pre earthworms can restore the hard pan of compacted dirt. So prevalent in lawns. Uh, I, have, I have no idea if that's true or not. But he's making a claim there. Their, their castings are rich in nutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, three major elements necessary for plant growth and photosynthesis. Castings also contain magnesium, carbon, calcium, all very important plant nutrients. In just one year, a thousand earthworms and their descendants can transform one ton of organic waste into high yield fertilizer. I, I have no idea if that's true. Could be true, could not be true. I have no clue. Some important ways earthworms help transform transform the soil they so they he's going to list some things here that are apparently beneficial they tunnel through the soil aerating it as they go now that's true but i mean it's not aerating it in the sense that we when we think of aeration in turf grass but uh, their channels also allow water to enter and penetrate the soil more quickly again i'm not don't assume any of this is true and don't assume any of it is not true he's just making statements Grass roots can also grow better in soil loosened by earthworms, resulting in a deeper root system and healthier lawns. Number four, earthworms neutralize the soil, either lowering the alkalinity or raising the acidity. Turf grass likes soil near the near to the middle between acid, acidic and alkaline. So this claim is saying that they'll both raise the soil pH and lower the soil pH. <laughs> That's interesting. I don't know if it's true. Earthworms consume organic material like thatch. Now that's a that's a claim we can actually measure and we know that they, as far as i'm aware that's not true but i could be wrong on that i have to look it up worms can compose can compost four times quicker than a well-managed composting bin a large population and then the last one a large population of earthworms helps control pests many soil-borne diseases are reduced significantly when earthworms are present so there's a whole bunch of claims there that are positive okay so we're going to finish this up. There's just one more little paragraph here, how to attract earthworms. And this is where it kind of goes off the rails. Spread three quarters of an inch of organic material twice a year onto the lawn. Mid October and mid April are the best times. You, you, this is the second one. Use a mulching lawn mower and let the clippings drop it back onto the lawn. Earthworms will bring much of this material below ground to eat and digest. Number three. Don't use pesticides or use them in extreme moderation. Choose organic pesticides if necessary. Pesticides are indiscriminate and kill earthworms and other beneficial organisms. Go to the last one. I'm going to come back then. Don't use man-made chemical fertilizers. Chemical fertilizers contain sulfuric and hydrochloric acids, which are deadly to earthworms. Few worms exist in soils treated with chemicals. Use organic fertilizers instead. Uh, and then he says, there is no need to add earthworms to your lawn. There are, you know, earthworms are in the air. They'll be attracted. Okay. So he's made numerous claims and so forth. I have no, I have no reason to believe any of it's true. He's just making a bunch of claims. He hasn't provided any sort of evidence. And as we talked about just a day or two ago, I don't need to provide any evidence to refute it. He hasn't provided any evidence to support it. So I'm not convinced it's true and I'm not convinced it's not true. I don't know. I'd have to go look it up, but his claims and the last are about pesticides. Don't use pesticides or use them in extreme moderation. Choose organic pesticides. Pesticides are indiscriminate and kill earthworms and other organisms. Now, if you're in turf grass, particularly if you're in sport turf or if you're in golf or sod, lawn care is a little different because they have a little bit higher cut grass and it's a little less of an issue. But you know if you're in those uh, tight cut grasses of 500 or below that earthworms in some, in some instances can be devastating to uh, the surface playability because they'll, the, the castings are, are 
a nuisance for ball roll, for footing, for just the looks, for mowing. It's awful. So in, in turf grass, we are often trying to find ways, um, safe ways to control the population of earthworms because it's so great in many cases, even when we're applying uh, herbicides, for example, or even insecticides, for example, we're applying, you know, pesticides to control pests in some cases. And even in those cases, earthworms will still thrive. So the turf grass system in many locations are, is really a garden uh, made <laughs> to grow earthworms, even in the presence of pesticides. We're all very familiar with this. Okay. When he says, don't use man-made chemical fertilizers, um, you know, basically he's saying synthetic fertilizers and he's, he's arguing that synthetic fertilizers are deadly hydrochloric acid and sulfuric acids are, are deadly to earthworms. Now, again, I'd have to go look it up to find evidence. I don't need to find evidence. All I know, all I, all I can tell you is there's no reason to believe it, but his position is this is true. Okay. Fertilizers kill earthworms and pesticides kill earthworms. Let's just assume for the sake of discussion tonight that all of that is true. Okay. Let's go to another article. Now, if you're on Twitter at all, you, you've probably come across probably the single handedly most viewed turf video in the history of turf videos came out about a month ago from a s assistant superintendent over in Arizona. Her video on Twitter has been viewed 33 million times. I think her name is M. Oh, let me look it up. Um, I don't, I didn't have Twitter pulled up to look at it. <clears throat> I can't, where is it at? It's E M. Oh, there it was. I had it. E M Casey, M Casey. So it's at E M K E M Casey with a C turf. And, uh, I looked at it. So it's still at 33 million. Okay. So that video was viewed so many times, CNN picked it up. So CNN, I'm going to fix this real quick because I had it fixed earlier and I, I moved everything. CNN picked up, um, Miss, I guess her name's Miss Casey. I don't, I don't know her, her actual, her real name is. Um, I'm going to make this a little bit easier to read for you guys. Picked it up and they have a, they have a article on it. it says an Arizona golf course is under attack from a squadron of pig like creatures. Remember we're talking about earthworms and this gentleman saying fertilizers and chemicals kill earthworms and don't use chemicals and don't use, you know, synthetic fertilizers and all these things. Cause it's awful for earthworms. If this, and that was specifically to your yard, to turf grass is what he was saying. Well in Arizona, and I've seen this in Florida, I don't know how many times where turf gets ripped up. Okay. By varmints. That's an Oklahoma way of saying an animal. <laughs> okay. So here you can see a photo for those listening. I'm showing a photo of a fairway, um, of where was the, what was the art? Where's the, at the Arizona sunshine break seven canyons in the morning. Okay. So it's, I guess it's seven canyons country club. I thought I, I thought they had it listed here real quick early on, but I don't see it anyway. Showing a fairway, beautiful fairway beautiful golf course, some mountains in the background, nice sky and turf is just ripped up out of this fairway. Now on her video on Twitter, she shows acres and acres and acres in the rough in the fairway on tees everywhere. Turf is just tore up bad. Okay. So let's read through this and see what, what's going on. Um, growling, crackling teeth, the rumble of ho hooves, as night falls on one of the United States' most scenic golf clubs, sinister noises reverberate off the Red Rock Canyon walls. And when the Arizona sunshine breaks over seven canyons in the morning, the destruction is revealed. Sprawling mounds of ravaged turf blot the 7,000-yard course like open wounds, soil and grass strewn in all directions across otherwise pristine fairways. The perpetrators, Javelina, a pig-like creature with raking canine teeth whose capacity for chaos is in the town of Sedona, has seen them become a viral sensation. When you come upon them and see them, it's like the Tasmanian devil, Seven Canyons general manager, Dave Bisbee told CNN. There's turf flying all over the place. There's grunting, there's fighting for rather small creatures. They do a lot of damage. They can rototill some turf with those teeth. It is really disturbing when you see it. Okay. So, and they have a picture here of one of these. It's just like a little hog is what it looks like. I don't know if it's technically a hog, but it looks like a little hog. 
Um, I'm going to skip through some of this. Uh, with a white collar ring, gray, gray black fur, javelina typically grow three to four feet long and 19 inches tall, weighing in any, anywhere between 40 and 60 pounds with a seven and a half year average lifespan, according to the Arizona State Department of Game and Fish. Common to the desert areas, yet adaptable to, range in the to a range of habitats, they have predominantly herb herbivorous diet of cacti, bulbs, and other plants, but will also eat garbage insects and fatefully for Seven Canyon staff, worms. Okay. So located at the base of Vermilion Cliffs and encircled by the Co Coconino National Forest, the private course with its nutrient rich fairways and bountiful water hazards presents an irresistible all you can eat and drink buffet for a species looking to fatten up for the winter. Earthworms wriggling in the top few inches of grass are a particular delicacy for the javelina which are not strictly nocturnal, but all are most active at dark. Consequently, 25 to 30 strong, 30 strong herds, also known as squadrons, churn up expanses of turf in search of a midnight snack. Okay, so they go on through here. They show that they show the course, an aerial photo, photo of the course without the damage. And um, they talk about, you know, the various things about the javelina and so forth. But basically and they talk about the cost several hundred thousand dollars in damage there's a photo of, of one fairway looks like yeah it's a fairway here real you know huge damage lots and lots of damage to this uh, turf grass which is unfortunate i mean you know i, I, I get that um it's it's not it's not going to be easy to replace that you're going to it's probably going to have to resod it they're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars in repair and labor and all these things okay but that's that's not what i want the point was oh, her name is emily casey okay the lady who posted the, the video is called her name is emily casey apologize for, to her if she's listening to this that i miss i misspoke about your name um so um, that's all I want to talk about in terms of that that particular article. There's a there's a golf course in Arizona that's getting devastated and destroyed from a hog that's digging up turf grass to eat the earthworms. So you've created an environment that is incredibly fertile for biodiversity. Turf grass systems, the soil turf grass system, is extremely diverse, and you have another person on the other spectrum saying, "Don't apply chem chemicals. Don't apply." Uh, synthetic fertilizers it's going to kill earthworms now you can't have both under the same setting you can't have that's that's it comes back to the the, the logical absolute where it's a non-contradiction you can't have one person saying it's going to kill all the earthworms and another situation saying this hog's tearing up all this grass because he's eating all the earthworms on my golf course and i'm assuming they're applying fertilizer under bmps and they're following the proper best management practices which is in, which includes ipm and some pesticide usage and so forth like that. I'm assuming all that's the case. It may not be true, but I'm assuming they're applying some fertilizer and they're applying some pesticides. And there's earthworms everywhere. So you have one person saying yes and one person saying not yes, right? And I mean, Emily Casey's not saying that, but they're showing examples where, you know, clearly earthworms exist in settings where there's plenty of turf and there's plenty of nutrients and plenty of pesticides and more than likely being applied under BMP um, uh, regular boundaries. Okay, so how do we how do we approach this? I mean, I'm, you know, how do, how do you determine who's right and who's wrong? I'm assuming that what she's showing is accurate. Could not be. I don't know. I'm not there. I'm assuming that they're uh, that 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 javelin is eating earthworms. They could. I don't know. I'm not a javelin expert. I have no idea. I'd have to go look it up. I'm inclined to believe them. I'm looking at photographs. I'm looking at, you know, experts saying that that's what happens, but I don't know that for sure. And then I have another person saying, well, don't apply all these chemicals because it's going to kill all the earthworms. I don't know that for sure. Okay. So I'm in a situation where you have two people saying things that can't both simultaneously be true. And that's what, this is what epistemology is about. How do we know what we know and how we find these answers is to go explore the literature, go and look at Google Scholar, look at Turfgrass Information File. You have to do a little background look, but the, we know they both can't be true. And when you go and you look in the literature, this Turfgrass literature for, or you just go to, go to Turfgrass Information File and ty type in earthworms. You're going to have a whole bunch of articles pop up. And normally, there, there are articles by an entomologist trying to figure out how to have a, have a safe way to control them because their populations are so high on turfgrass. 
Okay, under conditions of, you know, normal turf management, the populations are usually quite high. And they're trying to figure out, well, what is it? What is a product that we can use or management practices that we can employ or follow that would minimize the amount of earthworms? Because there's so many, they're actually a nuisance or a hazard sometimes. So that's how I'd find the evidence. That's how I would find out who's accurate, who's correct here. 